everyone and welcome to the video on sampling. This is part one, probability sampling. The first type of random sampling I want to go over is called simple random sampling. The goal of SRS is to select a sample in such a way that everyone has an equal chance of being selected. The key word here is equal um, or known. I'll get to that in the next couple of slides. So imagine if we had uh, names in a hat, the lottery method, and we were to just randomly pick names out of that hat. That's simple random sampling. Let's use a more specific example. Let's say there are 100 students in an MSW cohort, but we can only interview 25 to ask them about how they felt about the program. I would put all the names in a hat and randomly pick 25. In this case, everyone has a one in 100 chance of being picked. There are two types of SRS. There's what's called with replacement and SRS without replacement. Let's talk about with replacement. We would pick names out of that hat. Let's say Allison, Elizabeth, and Paul. We would put the names back in the hat. There goes Allison, Elizabeth, and Paul. And then we would pick again. So this time we might pick Scott and Elizabeth and Jane. What's important to note here is that everyone has a 1 in 100 chance of being picked. And what this also means is that I can randomly pick the same person more than once. If this happens, then I just put the name back and pick again. But the key here is that there's always a list of 100 names in the hat, and so everyone has a 1 in 100 a chance of being picked. So that's with replacement. So then you can probably guess that with that replacement means picking names without putting the names back. So what would that look like? Here we have our hat. I pick Allison. I don't put her name back in. And so I have Allison um, still out there. And then I pick again and I pick Paul. What's important to note here is that the first person, in this case Allison, had a 1 in 100 chance of being picked because at the time that she was picked, there were 100 names in the hat. The second person has a 1 in 90, 90, excuse me, a 1 in 99 chance of being picked. So because Allison's name was left out of the hat, there was 99 names left. So Paul was picked at a time when everyone had a 1 in 99 chance of being picked. So then you can imagine the third person is 1 out of 98, et cetera. But they all have equal chances within that group of 99, 98, et cetera. For example, when I pick Allison, like I said, she's the 1 in 100. But Paul also was in a group with Elizabeth, Jane, Scott, et cetera. And all of them were with the other students' names in the hat for a total of 99. So all of these people had a 1 in 99 chance of being picked. It's just that Paul was the one that was picked. Jane could have easily been picked as well. The hat example is useful to illustrate simple random sampling, but just keep in mind in reality, most often it's a list of names on an actual hard copy listing or more often and more likely some sort of database like Excel or Access or, uh, or something else. The second type of random sampling is stratified random sampling. And here, the goal is to randomly pick from key subgroups of interest. Why would we do this when simple random sampling is so simple? Well, there might be some groups in the sampling frame that are small in number. And random selection, just simple random selection, might miss including them. For example, let's say I have a list of clients. Let's say there's 1,000 clients on this list. And I find out 60% are married, 30% are divorced, and 10% are single. Well, if I just pick from this list of all clients, I might miss uh, the, the folks who are single. I might only get a couple of them, depending on the size of my sample. So what I will do is I will divide that big list into little lists. 
by marital status. These are called subgroups or strata. The individual list of married clients, for example, would be called a stratum. Um, but overall, it's called they're, they're called strata, which is why we call this stratified random sampling. So I would take a random sample within each listing, the sublisting. So if my married clients on, uh, that I have on this list of only married clients, I might pick 60 randomly. I might do the, the names in a hat for just this listing and then do the same for just the divorce clients and just the single clients. The key here is that I'm randomly selecting a sample or sometimes called a subsample from each subgroup or stratum. I'm not picking from the larger list, okay? There are two types of stratified random sampling. One is called proportionate and the other is called disproportionate. Let's go over proportionate stratified random sampling. So this is that same graphic I had previously, 60% married, 30% divorced, etc. Now in this case, let's say I want to interview 50 clients and I want the marital status of my 50 clients for my study to match the distribution of marital status in the overall population of 1,000 clients. So what I would do is I would say, okay, I want 60% of my 50 to be married, 30% of my 50 to be divorced, and 10% of my 50 to be single. So what that means is, is that I would randomly select 30 married clients, randomly select 15 divorced clients, and randomly select five single clients. The key here is that the proportions or the percents um, which both mean the same thing, all match. So when I look at my sample of 50 clients by marital status, that distribution of proportions matches the distribution of proportions in the list of all 1,000 clients. What we are saying is that the sampling proportion equals the population proportion for each stratum. If that makes it more confusing, then just ignore it and go with what I said earlier. Okay, so then you can imagine um, the disproportionate stratified random sampling means that the percents don't match. But what would that look like? Okay, here's our graphic again. Uh, we want the 50 clients, but in this case, we're saying, you know what, 10% out of 50 is five single clients, and that's not enough to get, you know, um, a, rep uh, a representativeness of the larger population of 1,000 clients. So what we're going to do is oversample some of the um, clients in particular subgroups. So I might say I want the distribution by marital status to look more like this, 40% married, 30% divorced, and 30% single, in which case I would have 20 clients, so still a lot, uh, 15 clients, and 15 clients. Um, so it's a more sort of equal distribution, if you will, by oversampling, which means then that the proportions or the percents don't all match. Okay. Um, the distribution by marital status of the 50 clients, those percents don't match the distribution of marital status in the population of 1,000 clients. Another way to say that is that the sampling proportion does not equal the population proportion for each stratum. But again, if that's too confusing, just go with what I said here um, earlier. Okay, systematic random sampling. Here the goal is to select a sample using a more systematic procedure. And what is that procedure? I know you're dying to know. Um, well, we decide on a sample size that we are looking for. Previously, it was 50. Um, we randomly select a place to start on the sample frame. And remember, the sample frame is that listing of, of names. And then we select what's called every case unit. What is case? K is the population size divided by the sample size. Of course, this assumes that the list is randomly ordered. 
If it's not randomly ordered, then that would be a problem. Let's look at an example to kind of make this a little bit more clear, because I know with the words, it's a little hard to imagine. So let's say I have a population of 50 clients, and here are my clients on this list. I need to interview 10 clients. I can't interview all of them. So what I do is I say, okay, 50 divided by 10 is five. That's my case unit. So I pick a random name to start with, in this case Ezekiel, and then I select every fifth person until I have 10 names. So counting down five, I get Noah. So he's gonna be in my study, if he says yes. Uh, going down five, that's Jerry. Another five, we have Shiva. And notice when I uh, ran out at the end of the column of names, I just went back up to uh, the top right. And then after Shiva, we have Dwayne, Andrea, and uh-oh, I'm at the end of my list. What do I do? What do I do? I go back up. So to the, to the left side of my list, and I pick Carol, Glenn, Sasha, and then you guessed it, Bob. So here are the 10 names that I have systematically but randomly picked. Cluster area sampling is the last type of random sampling I will be going over. The objective here is to get a representative sample from a large geographic area. So a lot of national surveys or state level surveys will use this method because it's impossible to um, interview everybody in a state, for example. Okay, so how does this look? Let's say we were interested in getting a representative sample of California. One way would be, or one place to start would be to randomly select 10 counties. Now I'm just making that number 10 up. It could be five counties, it could be 20 counties. It just depends on um, at what kind of sample size we're looking for at the end, what we can afford to do. So in this case, I may randomly pick Monterey, Ventura, San Diego, and all these other 10 counties. And the key being that I'm picking these counties randomly. So I could do simple random sampling, or in a case like this, I might say, well, there's different uh, regions in California that have different populations. You know, Northern California is, is quite different than Southern, which is quite different than Central. So I might uh, use region as a, as a strata uh, to use stratified random sampling to make sure that I'm getting, let's say, four counties in the northern region, four counties in the central, and four counties in the southern. Um, but regardless of what method I use, it has to be random. Oh, I just said that. This can be used and done using any random sampling method. Okay. So then within a county, and in this case, let's say Ventura County, I might say, I'm going to randomly select three cities in each county, or I'm going to randomly select 10 cities. Um, more often, it would probably be some sort of proportion because you know the number of cities within a county could vary. So I might say, I'm gonna pick 25% of all cities or 10% of all cities. And here are the three random ones that I picked. Okay, so, then I might say, okay, let's randomly select five census tracts in each city. There we go, I randomly pick them. And this is just an example of a census tract. It's not any particular census tract it's because I wasn't able to find one for Ventura County easily. Um, but in any case, again, I can use any random method, simple random, stratified, what, what have you. Uh, but the key is, is that it is random. So finally, then, we randomly select 10 households in each census tract and one person in each household to interview. So to review, we have 10 counties out of 58 in this example that we've randomly picked, three cities in each of those 10 counties, five census tracts in each of those three cities, and then 10 households in each census tract. That's a total of 1,500 people in the sample. And because we did this step by step in, uh, and within each step, 
picked randomly, then these, these 1,500 people in the sample are a pretty good representation of all Californians. Probably this study has really good external validity. Okay, so here are the sources of the images used. And this is the end of part one. It's not the end of the sampling videos. So look for part two.